Welcome to Athletes and Tech Enthusiasts. Welcome to Try to Disagree, where we're diving into the debate on AI in triathlon training. I'm Mark Threlfall, your host for today on this clash of ideas. Traditional methods meet cutting edge AI. Let's settle the score on whether you can really take us to the finish line faster. This is Try to Disagree, let's debate. Did you get AI to write the intro for you? Maybe. Now, for the last few years, or number of years, we've seen AI embed itself in all aspects of life, even triathlon. And in particular, today, we're going to be talking about triathlon coaching and training. Yes, could AI be changing, or already have changed, the face of coaching itself? Yeah, now, a little disclaimer here, neither of us are AI experts, we're both fairly well, tech-minded. We have, however, both used AI training platforms, so we do actually have a bit of experience here. Yeah, before we get into the coaching debate, let's look at some of the places in sport where AI is already having an impact and being used, such as like talent identification, identifying people who may, in the future, be top talents, uh, injury prevention through like data analysis over wide ranges of data. Uh, there's various other things, competition analysis. I mean, you get so much data these days from, from competitions. The AI has been used to crunch it. Uh, even performance analysis, uh, on like something like Training Peaks, where it looks at your your uh, session after your race afterwards and glean some information that it would take a coach a long time to glean. Referee assistance, such as Hawkeye or VAR, oh, yeah. that's uh, AI looking at that. Uh, even optimizing equipment in the wind tunnel, that kind of thing, where AI can look at computational flow, etc. Uh, there's a lot of things where AI is kind of creeping into. Yeah, and, and you could argue that it's had a positive or a big benefit in some of those areas. But how about coaching. It's time to uh, debate this one, James, and take our sides. Which side do you want to take? I think AI will help with coaching, so I'm going to go four. Okay, well, the decision's been made. Hit me with your four arguments. <laughs> okay, well, any coach that is data savvy will know that there is a world of data now that is coming in from their athletes. I mean, you've got so much stuff being recorded from 24-7 lifestyle trackers that are recording HRV and your heart rate and everything like that, all the way through to your actual performance where you've got your power from multiple different sources. You've got weather data, you've got temperature data, you've got so many things all coming in that it's getting harder and harder to kind of crunch those numbers. And AI can help you. They can kind of, it can discern all that information into something readable and, and you, can, you can quickly glean what you need to know from it very, very easily because AI has already kind of crunched the numbers. Yeah. Um, however, and you're probably going to hear me say this a number of times a day, an athlete isn't just about the data that they churn out, okay? So, yes, um, like you can input some arbitrary emotions and feelings per day into Whoop or various platforms that you're using that the AI takes into account. But it's really top-line stuff. It's not really diving into how they are, their emotions, what's going on in their life, their stresses. And so actually, I think there's some limitations to it. And that is where a coach comes in, that personal relationship with a coach, and they can really dive into that. And I think you see that with the fact that each coach would deal with an individual athlete very differently because it really requires that personal, individual knowledge and experience from a coach and an athlete relationship. But does it? Because we are all essentially, to a certain degree, machines. And if you know that you've done this and your HRV has done that and your fatigue is this level, you know to a pretty close degree how long it's going to take for you to recover from whatever the last stimulus was. As long as you're recording enough data and the AI has enough data, it can draw conclusions based on how much work you've done, how long it's going to be before you can do that work again. Uh, if, for example, you called up your coach and said, I'm feeling really lousy, uh, I, I think I need a day off. You could similarly just go to AI, I need a day off. And it could immediately go, well, yeah, that's understandable. And because you feel lousy, it's going to take you this much longer before you can push again. And that's immediate. It, it'll take a coach years, decades even, to learn what works and what doesn't work and when a warning sign is an actual warning sign and when a warning sign is just an athlete being a little bit soft. Whereas an AR can glean that information from multiple athletes, thousands of athletes, and in a very short amount of training, 
understand that for 99.9% of athletes, this red flag means this and they can apply. But again, it comes back to that they are relying solely on the data you've put into it and it's a little bit of information you've said, I need to change the session or I can't do this session today. It really doesn't understand the full picture of the person, what's going on in their life. And that is where the coach comes in, that personal discussion, really diving into it. That is information that you just cannot get across to AI, perhaps at this point, maybe in the future, but currently AI cannot understand it to that depth. And that is where that coach comes in. So, yeah, I mean, sport is determined so much more, by so much more than just skill. As I keep saying here, when I'm planning a training plan for an athlete, I have to take into account their work, their family, their life. And you're planning the training around that. It's not just, you need to do this, here's your plan for that. There's so much more that goes on. But the counter argument to that is, as a coach, often the only information you're getting is that subjective feedback from your athlete going, you know what, I did that session, but I didn't feel great. And you don't get any other information. Whereas then you, to you, you go, well, okay, maybe why didn't they feel that great? And you go into their program and you look at, right, what have they done the few days before? What did they do in that particular session the last time we did that particular session? How is it different, etc.? Which you're then looking at data, which is the same data that the AI has, has access to. And you're just applying one tiny fraction of data, that subjective feedback that they gave you, and drawing massive conclusions from it. And human intuition, yeah, sometimes at work, and the really best coaches, as I say, who have been doing it for 20, 30, 40 years, will be able to, in a very quick uh, assessment of the athlete, be able to discern, okay, I know what's happening here, this is what they need. But 99% of coaches can't do that at all. And then the AR might actually be better because it removes that human intuition, that human emotion that when the athlete comes to them with some sob story about how they're feeling really lousy and they really need a day off, it doesn't go, oh, uh, yeah, okay, well, I think maybe you should have two or three days off. When actually the data goes, there's nothing wrong with you physically. You can definitely push on and actually probably do you some good to do a little bit of a hard session and feel good about yourself. Okay. Let's, let's try something else here. See if we can meet in the middle. I'm going to extend a little olive branch here. Uh, do you think AI should completely replace coaching? Or is it more of aligning the two and AI assisting a human coach? Okay, yeah. I would say for most people, AI can't completely replace a coach. Uh, AI can help a lot with the uh, removal of kind of the... Uh, the difficulty and the data analysis and make those things much easier so that a coach can work much more efficiently and much more effectively with the data they have because there is just more and more data coming in from athletes and it's getting harder and harder for an ath- for a coach to kind of cut through the noise and see what's actually going on. And I agree on. with you. There is so much now and it's brilliant that we're able to get this much data and the AI can help the coach, as you say, sort of understand that very quickly um, in a very intuitive way and get, get that information. It allows them to focus their attention on other aspects of performance that maybe they never had time to before. And then you are actually furthering the athlete's potential in their performance. I mean, we have actually both used, as I said at the start, AI platforms. We've used Humango specifically, or Humango. Um, and I did it for the Xterra event a couple of years ago. You're using it currently using, for yeah. yeah the Ultra Trail Snowdonia. Steve used it for his Ironman uh, last year, and both to success. So yeah, a lot of practical really applications for it. I'd say where we currently are with AI is probably the middle ground where you need a little bit of guidance, a little bit of like keeping an eye on you, make sure you're not overdoing it, make sure you're not uh, sending up any red flags or really pushing too hard or really risking taking risks uh, is where AI can really work. For the top end, the really good athletes who are looking for the final 1% to 2% in their performance, AI is probably not smart enough yet to discern the 1% or 2% that you need in your performance to fix it. Similarly, for the beginner who's just coming into the sport and really needs some hand holding to make sure that they can get in the right go you know the right motivation and get them going and make sure that they're enjoying it rather than just it's all about performance and hitting numbers and running at certain paces. Uh, we'll probably also not get much advantage from AR. But in that middle ground where you are fairly confident of what you need to do, 
but you are a bit worried that you might push a little bit too hard or take a rest day where you really didn't need a rest day or not take a rest day where you really did need a rest day, then AI is already at the point where it can actually make those decisions for you or at least help you make those decisions by going, I've looked at your training for the last week and you are a little bit in the red. Probably if you're feeling tired, now is the time to rest. Yeah. And you don't need a coach to do that anymore. AI can already do that. It is already there. And I think we're going to see it progress further and further and further where it can get closer and closer to those high performance things. Mm. I don't think it's there yet, yep. but it is definitely part of the future. Okay. All right. So I think in conclusion, we can say AI is making a move. We kind of like what it's doing. We're not saying it's going to completely replace human coaching. Um, we do think it's going to revolutionise coaching and, and sport. And everything general. else in our life. <laughs> well, yeah. um, and, I, and I do believe if uh, there, there is a risk that some people that aren't willing to embrace it and accept it will get left behind because it will have, I hope, a positive impact in our sport and coaching. But... We'd love to hear from you guys what you think. Let yeah. us know in the comment section down below. Do you think AI is good for our sport or not specifically around coaching and training? It'd be really interesting to hear your thoughts. I would also say that it's only good if it improves your overall sporting experience. Yes. If having an AI telling you you're naughty and you shouldn't have done that and you're, you really should have taken a day off is going to significantly stress you out, I, probably don't get a robot to and tell you. you. And, and sorry, <laughs> you make a good point here because... Um, it is just solely going to go after performance, isn't it? And yeah. actually, sometimes you just need the coach to go, hey, just go for that four-hour adventure. Yeah, And just exactly. enjoy yourself. Yeah, exactly. And that sometimes, is important. Sometimes you just need the mental health benefit of, oh, you know what, I know I'm not supposed to be going for a run right now, but I really need to de-stress I'm going out for a run. And you don't need an AR to tell you afterwards that, oh, you've messed up now, you mm. are in a hole. Uh, so yeah, as long as it's not taking any enjoyment away from it, then yeah, I think probably it is the time for people to start investigating uh, how they could use AR to help them with their training. Uh, but maybe it's not for everyone just yet. Wow. Interesting debate. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. See you next time. Thanks for watching.